Good morning. My name is Andre Mubarak. I'm a Palestinian Arab Christian. I am from the old city of Jerusalem. Yes, what you hear, the Palestinian Arab Christians. We exist. We belong to this part of the world. We are from Jerusalem. Actually, you are now, this morning, inside the streets of the old city of Jerusalem inside the Christian quarter. This is my playground. This is where I used to play as a young child at the stones and the pillars of the first century. I used to play hide and seek and run and jump on these pillars as a young child and playing around. And actually this is the Via Della Rosa. This is my playground. You heard about, you never probably heard about the Palestinian Arab Christians. You think all Palestinians are Muslims and all Israels are Jewish. But this is not the reality. We exist, Palestinian Arab Christians. We've been here since the first, second, third century. We belong all the way back to the early church. And we belong to this part of the world. I'm walking from my home all the way down to the streets of the old city and walking nearby station number eight. This is the Via Dolorosa, the way of the cross, where Jesus was taken all the way from condemnation to Calvary and then resurrection. Station eight is the place where he said, don't cry on me, daughters of Jerusalem, cry on yourselves. And this is, as a child, I was coming here and playing, and there were many people coming, and tourists asking me, Andre, we are lost. Where is the Holy Sepulcher? Where is Calvary? Where is Jaffa Gate? So as a young, happy boy, I used to take them around and take them to their destinations. And so many times, they asked me very hard questions and I didn't know the answer and but one time they gave me sweets and I remember these memories since my childhood playing in the Via Dolorosa where Jesus walked the way of the cross the way of suffering and this is about my life the stations of the cross I belong to the Maronite church. The Maronites all the way starts in the fourth century and their origins go to the hermit, a priest that dedicated his life to live in the mountains and he was praying all the time and so many people were following him and he was doing miracles and people getting healed and his name was Saint Maron. And after his death, the early Christians, Assyrian Christians, his followers were named the Maronites. And this is the Maronite church. And to give you an idea about the Maronite Christians, the total population of the land of Israel is 7.5 million. You have to know that 80% of that are Jewish, 17% are Muslims, and 2% is a mosaic of religions. What's left? 1%. And the 1% are the indigenous Christians. And this 1%, half of them are Catholic Christians, and the other halves are Orthodox Christians. And 1% of the nominal Christians are Maronites. And 1% of the 1% of the Maronites are spirit-filled Christians. So almost as if we do not exist. There are only 25 Maronite families in Jerusalem. And my father made us every week come to the Mass here, to the church. And I have a lot of memories inside this church that belongs to my community, the Maronite community, the indigenous early church that go all the way back to the 4th, 3rd, 2nd century. You'll be surprised, how come I'm a Palestinian Christian? How come there are Christians here? But I want to tell you, 
we exist and we belong to this part of the world. This is where Jesus was on the way of the cross. This is where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He was raised in Nazareth, had his childhood and he had his ministry in Galilee and he came back to Jerusalem to Calvary to the cross and we are the early followers of Jesus Christ. We call the Palestinian Christians. This is my high school and look the basements of the school and the stones go all the way back to Herod the Great. These stones and these frames are 2,000 years old. How come we know? Because of the frame and the architect. These are reused stones constructed in modern times for building my school. This is the playground. This is where I used to play basketball with my friends. And here you see the walls of Jerusalem. And my class is from off one of these windows. And all the time I was distracted and looking at the tourists. We used to be 35 Christians inside the class and if I want to tell you today I remember only there is around five that stayed in the country. The rest of the students, the 30 students migrated to the West either to South America or Australia because life in the Christian quarter is like uh, not having any hope and they lost hope and there is no future. So most of my classmates decided just to leave Jerusalem. But I want still to stay in Jerusalem to be like light and salt. I want to tell you, Arab Christians, Palestinians, we are like a jewel in the hands of God. But this jewel has been unpolished. And today is the time of history for the Holy Spirit to polish this jewel and for our voices to be known. Yes, we exist, but I have good news for you. We are called the forgotten Christians, but the good news is God always uses the minorities, God always uses the unimportant to make them very important in His kingdom. And just to tell you, these are the walls of Jerusalem and many times we had history classes here and it was so boring for me. So I ran away from school all the way to Newgate and all the way I could see tourists. And I asked them, do you want a tour guide? Do you want a tour guide? Do you want someone to show you about Jerusalem history? And history came alive to me. And instead of staying in the class learning about the French Revolution and learning about history that I don't care about, but I need to study and care about the history of my city and welcome to my school welcome to Flair school this is, uh, Bethlehem University uh, the campus I studied here business administration in 1993 and that was during the first intifada in this quarter there was a lot of riots a lot of shooting a lot of troubles all the time and we had a lot of pressure from the studies and the situation was not easy and every time I went to the courtyard I saw students sitting together and the students were so happy all the time and I wondered there's a hard exams the situation is hard and why they are happy all the time so one day I had the courage to approach them and tell them guys there's something different in you I want to know because I was a nominal Christian and I asked them what is the secret of your happiness? They said to me, we are Christians. I told them, I'm a Christian too, but I'm not happy like you. There is something more than that. Then they told me, you have to accept Jesus Christ into your life. I said, I want to do that. What shall I do? And they told me, repeat after me. And I repeated after them here. And I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart. And I immediately felt the presence and the peace of the Holy Spirit in my life and my life started to change completely from a nominal Christian to a strong spirit-filled believer and my life changed in this place in Bethlehem University. After I was saved in Bethlehem University I used to hang with my friends here 
in Zion Square, in the center city, in the new city. And I remember year 2001, December, it was almost midnight, it was Saturday, and I had a gut feeling there is something weird gonna happen here. I didn't know what was it, but I was with my friend and there was a lot of people and it was so crowded here because it's in the center, the heart of the city. And a voice came to me, Andre, move right now. I didn't listen. The same voice after five seconds came to me like an order. Andre, I tell you, move right now. Also, I didn't listen. Then after like 10 seconds, I was walking around here. I felt someone pushing me all the way, all the way, all the way to the other side of the street. And I went to a coffee shop there and I sat down and after like three seconds, a bomb attack took place. 11 people were killed. The first thing I've done, I checked my body all the way from down all the way to top and I was complete I told God because you saved me it's the Holy Spirit that pushed me all the way away from the crowd I am gonna give you completely my life and from that second from that minute I decided to be fully to walk with Jesus Christ I decided to be a committed and a strong Christian and that incident transformed my life and made me a very strong believer.